Hello guys, Game Boy Hub here. And today we have another laptop on our workbench right here. Now, this is my dad's old work laptop. It is the HP Pavilion DC7, and this laptop was manufactured in 2011. Now, this was a pretty okay mid to high spec laptop at the time. It came with a Core i3 and a pretty decent graphics processor and Windows 7. And this laptop is basically made to be like a media machine. It has all of these audio jacks. It has the media controls up there. So it was a pretty, pretty good laptop at the time. Now, my dad used this for work for almost 10 years until he upgraded. And now I thought, why not turn this old laptop, because it has a pretty good GPU, into a retro gaming machine. Since I like to play older Windows XP and Windows 7 games, and my dad also likes to do that as well, so we're gonna turn this into a little family retro battle station. So yeah, I'm pretty much gonna walk you through the process if you guys wanna turn an older machine into a retro gaming laptop. I'm gonna tell you all the things to watch out for and maybe some things to do. But yeah, basically, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is determine which software we are going to put on it. Now, currently it is running Windows 10 and it is pretty slow and runs pretty rough. And also Windows 10 does have a few problems with running these older games, so we definitely need to downgrade. Now, the main software choices for me are usually either Windows 7 or Windows XP. Now, Windows XP is great for all games from the 90s, 2000s, and even 2010s. Windows 7 also runs most of those games just fine, but it has better support for some newer titles and newer software. So I do already have a Windows XP gaming PC that I built a few years ago. That video is in the iCard now, but it isn't currently very operational. It just sits there pretty much. So I might make an updated video on Windows XP, but since this laptop came with Windows 7, I'm gonna be installing Windows 7 Ultimate today. And we're basically going to be checking out a bunch of games and see which run, which need software patches to run. And I'll tell you all about that. So yeah, let's first install Windows 7 and then we'll get to some other stuff. So we can open the DVD drive right here, put the disc in the drive and we can restart the system. And I just looked online, the BIOS key is supposed to be the escape key. So we're gonna press F10 to enter the BIOS right here. And here we are. So now we need to go over to system configuration and then boot options. If you guys don't know how to enter the BIOS on your machine, just look up the name of your machine and BIOS key and you should find that pretty easily. So we have CD-ROM boot enabled. So we need to go into boot order and we are going to go for yeah this bios is pretty tricky to navigate but we'll need to just push the cd dvd drive up there usb floppy needs to go down and for the last thing the network adapter there we go now the order is fine we have internal cd-rom drive at first also i'm not sure if this laptop already has an ssd i'm pretty sure it does but i'm not going to check that right now because it really isn't too important but i definitely do recommend spending 20 dollars on a new 128 gig ssd because that amount of storage is perfectly fine for retro gaming you don't need more and it will significantly speed up any computer that you have. So definitely upgrade the SSD if you guys can. So I'll just press F10 to save and exit. And now it should boot from the CD drive. And it is, we can press any key to boot from the DVD. And here we are in the Windows 7 setup. So yeah, everything right here is fine. I'll just switch to my keyboard method. If it is here, it is Croatian. There we go. And all of this is fine. Time and currency format. We're also going to go for the Croatian right here. And the language is gonna be English. So we're gonna click next and install now. 
we're gonna delete all of the existing partitions and we're just gonna make one drive because we don't need any of these older partitions. So I'm gonna delete all of them. Now I just have two unallocated spaces. I'm not sure how to join them together, even though it says that we can't. Maybe it has two disks in here. Maybe this is like a hard disk and this is the SSD. So that would be pretty cool if it does. So I'll just install it on the smaller disk because I'm pretty sure that is the SSD. So let's format this and yeah, I'm just gonna click next. And there we go. So we're just gonna install it on the smaller disk and then we're gonna have the larger one for storing games and such. So yeah, now I pretty much wait for everything to be copied and after it is, I'll be back. And there you go, Windows 7 has been installed. So we have no drivers, as you can see, everything is pretty enlarged. The sound driver did get recognized, which is pretty nice, but we'll need to install all of the other ones. So if you guys need drivers for specific machines and older operating systems, I just recommend putting that straight into Google. So just put the name of your laptop into Google and follow that up by drivers Windows 7 or drivers Windows XP and a bunch of results should usually show up and you should be able to get those right away. Now right over here I have this USB that I made and on there there is the HP uh, tool that basically installs all of the drivers that you need for you because HP does offer that and this drive is 16 gigabytes and formatted to FAT32 that is perfect for these older machines. So just don't go larger than 32 gigabytes because then you can't format it to FAT32. So yeah, I'll just plug this into the machine and we will navigate to our USB right here. And here is the HP support framework. So yeah, I'll install that in order to get all of our drivers. So I had some problems with the USB. It wasn't reading for some reason, but I couldn't find the correct version of the HP software. So I just got all of the drivers manually. Basically, the most important drivers you guys will need is the graphics driver, which is this one. Also the sound driver if you don't have it already, but we got it installed automatically this time. And also the chipset driver is pretty good to have. And all others are basically optional, but just basically click through anything your machine has and get all of the drivers. So let's install all of them and restart the machine afterwards. So all of the drivers went smoothly. You can see that we now have a wireless option, which is pretty cool. While I'm here, I'll also format this other drive that we got into NTFS and I'll just call it games. So we have a clean drive in order to store all of our games. And there we go. Now the drive is usable so we can use it for games, but the graphics driver can detect the card. So let's see what are we even running on here. Four gigabytes of RAM, which is the maximum for these retro PCs that I recommend. Anything more might cause some issues. We also have a Core i3 M330 clocked at 2.13 gigahertz, which is pretty good. And I've managed to find the correct drivers. So this machine has a GeForce 9600M GT graphics card, which is going to be more than enough for all of these retro games. So I'll just finish setting up the Nvidia installer and afterwards I'll restart the machine and get all of the changes applied. And there you go, it is done. So we can restart the machine. And yeah, this time we got the full audio experience. That boot chime was great. And we also have some drivers for graphics. As you can see, we can even probably turn up the screen resolution. It is at 1600 by 900, which is the maximum. And it looks great here on Windows 7. And now it is time to install games. So I will install a bunch of my favorite PC games on here and we'll see how they run and if they have any problems. By default, I will put everything pretty much onto the max settings and we'll see how it runs. And then, and then if we need to, I'll turn down some of the settings. So let's start with the benchmarks. Thank you. 
And there you go, that will be it for this quick and easy retro laptop build. This was a pretty quick and easy thing to do, and you can do this with any older machine you have lying around. The actual performance in games was okay, it was nothing special, but all of the games were tested at their highest settings, some of them only had the resolution turned down. So yeah, overall, I'd say I'm pretty happy with this build. Also, I can't report any major problems with the software or games. All of the ones that I tested were compatible with Windows 7 and needed no patching. Of course, you guys might run into that depending on what software version and which games you want to play. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one also please check out my twitter and instagram and also there is a join button now so if you guys would like to help out the channel for only a dollar a month you can do that and yeah i will see you guys in the next video